All right, so we're on day two of clay week and I do clay for the entire week so that I just have to set the tables with all of our boards and our bowls and everything like that, just one week. So today we will be getting pretty back-to-back -back classes and going to be making projects with every grade level except I think I don't have first grade today. So it should be pretty jam-packed. All right, I just got in this morning. Um, I'm gonna turn on all my lights and get my classroom ready for play week. I have these canvas wrapped boards that were in my classroom when I got here. I've got our little bowls of um, water that en kind of ends up being slipped because we use it all week. Um, and our toothbrushes for scratching and attaching and texture boxes that are out for all of our grades that they can use. And this is kind of like the main station for clay as far as when kids need things or if I'm prepping stuff. So I have everything already portioned that I did yesterday. So for example, I have second grade today and I will be showing them the example of clay quick like note just so i remember what i've portioned everything for and then mostly just putting things in um chunks so that the kids have the right amount of clay so all three of these bins are filled um with portioned clay for my classes that i'm going to see today um, i also have just a couple of tools they can grab and then usually just come back to this middle central table and one of the most important things to do get your apron on of course mine is filled with all of my favorite pins not all of them but a lot of them from art teachers and artists all over that inspire me. Hello friends, my name is Sarah Krajewski and today you are going to be following me on my day in my life. We're going to be working with clay all this week, which includes today. So if you haven't already liked and subscribed to the Art of Education YouTube channel, you're gonna wanna check it out so you can see more day in the life videos just like this. All right, my fifth grade made these very quick little pinch pot planters. So they got to pick an animal and they were working to create an entire little creature because we are gonna be planting them with real life plants we've been propagating all year. When you start doing your building, you're gonna break it into two parts. So one is for all your details and then the rest of this bigger space is going to be for your pinch pot. If you remember, we've done pinch pots before, but we're trying to figure out what shape we want to start with. So you're really hand building and molding. We're gonna use our little toothbrush here. It's actually good that there's kind of clay in the water. It's gonna help make it even stronger, but we scratch at the same time and attach. So we want it kind of wet and juicy. Scratch here where we're going to attach. Like those two parts come together like Velcro, right? If we just make them touch and they're not even scratched, then they'll just fall right apart. But if we have a scratch and a scratch, when it comes together, they're gonna really stick strong. So I'm gonna stick smooth and really make sure my piece is stuck on there. So I'm actually gonna take you on a little tour of the extra spaces in the art room that are not this part, the main space, and um, see some of the like behind the scenes of the art room um, that make it actually function. So I'm lucky enough to have a pretty huge storage space, my back room here, and the windows make me feel like I constantly need to keep it clean, but it's definitely not always like that. So when you enter this space, I did kind of like prepare the table so I would have enough space for all of the clay as we worked on projects, but typically the clay is stored kind of in my little kiln space, but you will see why it is back here and not in the kiln space. Also, let's just take note of this situation over here i was trying to move all of the things off of the counters and just i mean like literally stacks upon stacks but it's it's con contained right so it's fine and they say wisconsin doesn't have mountains like look at look at the mountain of yarn behind me if you can make one person laugh right <laughs> so now that we're in the storage room, let me show you one of my favorite parts besides like the pretty satisfyingly organized shelves. It's not bad. Mid-year, look at all that counter space. I will show you my other favorite part, which is Cece. I call her Cece because she's either like my comfort couch or my crying couch or whatever I need for the day. But um, just having like a soft spot to sit as a teacher when I need to work on my computer or when I need to do um, some extra like thinking time or meditation is just like crazy helpful. My fourth graders are working on some needle felting breakfast items for their fibers unit. So we're making um, some little plates for those to live on. They worked on a little bit of texture, made some like very floppy little forks. Mantra together, here we go. My mantra, I'm positive, I'm creative, I'm mindful, I'm amazing, I'm an artist. So 
today when you start working on your plate, we've got a few examples here. This one basically just has the pattern around the outside and then also has a utensil that's attached. If you want things like a fork and a knife or all three and cross them on um, top of each other as long as they are completely attached. Okay, the other behind the scenes space that I wanna take you is back here. This is, this is intense, y'all. Buckle up. I'm not gonna clean it or change anything. Look at, okay. This is my kiln room, which is nice. I'm glad I have one, but like, let me just show you how, how big it is and why it's filled to the brim with, with things. Okay, friends, welcome to my kiln room. I'm not complaining. This is great to have a space, but it's like, you know, it's like a, it's a little corridor. It's like a small little space. Um, half of it is filled with boxes. Who did that? I, did. I swear I clean it like four times a year and it always ends up looking like this. It's just too small of a space for me to stay organized and I always have to hide big boxes back here. I will say though, there is kind of a nice view of the clean art room <laughs> when you're in the kiln room. So it does sort of put things into perspective. Second grade made these little um, photo holders. So they are going to end up having a little wire like this one. And um, they're basically just stacked pinch pots, but trying to add a little bit of um, texture and detail to each of their petals. So they have a little bit more oomph at the bottom to really hold something up. And I'm gonna try to split all of my clay pieces into four chunks. So I shouldn't have any extra. Then I'm gonna take, just like we practiced by the carpet, take those chunks and roll them into a sphere. Okay, so you're gonna press, use those art muscles and really push, push, push to make sure that you're nice and strong and moving your clay. Okay, so we made it through the first three hours of the day. I've got my like solid coating of elephant skin hands of clay very professional um, and we're gonna keep going up next is kindergarten where we will be kind of just playing and exploring and then also making our um, stomp texture foot pendants um, which are very uh, you know just a solid practice in getting our kiddos to think about how clay is gonna take the shape of the texture that is around it all right friends I want to tell you about mindful hand washing this has been very helpful for me in all of my years of teaching uh, because we wash our hands so many times during the day as an art teacher so it's a matter of grounding yourself feeling your feet in your shoes and your shoes on the floor feeling the water run over your hands, looking at what's in front of you, and then taking a few deep breaths and really using that time that you're going to be doing something purposeful anyways, but to be very mindful and recenter yourself a little bit. So mindful hand washing is like kind of a game changer. All right, friends, if we're talking clay, we're also talking like crazy dry hands, especially if you do it all week. So the things that have worked for me, pow! Working hands is a good one. Um, and then just literally Lubriderm, these are my favorite ones. And I'm just like constantly slathering myself to try to avoid those beautiful little cracked fingertips. No, you're not alone. Texture is the way something feels. Texture is the way something feels. What about feel, feel the texture of your shoe, the bottom of your shoe. What does that feel like? Oh, bumpy for sure. Show your texture. Class, class, class. Yes, yes, yes. Show the texture of your shoe to the buddy right next to you. Show them now. <clears throat> I will take. I will take my clay sphere. My clay sphere. Roll it in a ball. Roll it in a ball. Set it on the ground. Set it on the ground. Squish my texture. Squish my texture. With my shoe. With my shoe. Bring it to Mrs. K. Ready to Mrs. K. Then grab a play chunk. Then grab a play chunk. And play at my spot. And play at my spot. And for third grade, we're working on these little llama looms. So I got this awesome idea from Amanda O'Shaughnessy at Studio Art Club, and she um, posted these super awesome looms for llamas. So we just cut a slab, and we're gonna add some yarn um, for their little woven blanket at the end. So I'm so excited. They're gonna be super cute. I mean, look at these faces. Class, class, class. Yes, yes, yes. So this is my cutie little llama. First by getting the pancake flattened and rolled out and using our little tracer to get it cut. Then we're going to add these little string holders and the texture on the face. 
All right, I'm just sitting down for lunch, but I wanted to give y'all a little hint about how I keep track of kids that are gone on clay day because we do all of our clay in the same week. If any students are absent, it's like a tricky thing when they come back and they've not done the clay project. So this is like very professional, but um, for each class, I just write down the students that are gone. But when um, they come back and they're here the next week, I have one little station set up in the art room that's like a mini clay teaching station. And instead of me needing to teach the lesson to the students that were gone, I'll select one responsible kiddo to be the teacher and they create a second clay project while teaching the student that was gone what to do. So they make a second one and that ends up becoming like a gift for their homeroom teacher. So that's worked really well for us when we're trying to keep track of absent students. We did it! We got through all of the kids that were here today to create their clay projects and I have just a mountain, well, not that much of a mountain, a small hill of clay. This is probably my favorite view is coming down this hallway by our little theater and just seeing all of the art that we have on display as we head towards the cafeteria. And with the help of bulletin boards, but also a couple few little tricks that we do, we can display so much more, even on walls that don't have any bulletin boards. So my favorite way to display things on cinder block walls are actually with these little hanging contraptions that we have. So I have attached some of the twisties wire with paint sticks that were painted by Art Club Kids and then attached it to the top of the ceiling with a paper clip and then hung these big long ladders all the way down to the bottom. And then when we're ready to display art, all we need to do is clothes pin artwork to the paint sticks and we've got like a super speedy um, hanging ladder display for the walls that don't have bulletin boards. I think the biggest thing that helped me feel a little bit more um, like I was having a good day was the preparation. So making sure that I had all of my clay prepared and portioned, whereas yesterday when I came in on Monday, who didn't get their clay ready for the classes. That was me. So part of it is just making sure I'm really thinking ahead to having everything out and prepared so we can just get to work when it's time for us to create. Um, but overall, amazing day. Really excited to finish up clay this week and I know the kids are super psyched. Like every day um, so far when they came in this week, it was like, <gasps> So exciting. All right, friends, I am ready to portion out my clay for tomorrow's classes. So I'm just gonna use my good old trusty string tool, cut a bunch of chunks and then have them ready so I can hand them right out to students when we start our clay projects. Um, so it's a little bit of extra prep, but it has to happen. Okay, I actually need to take a break from prepping clay to go do dismissal at the end of the day. Um, and I will be right back in to prepare for tomorrow. So this is just part of what I have portioned for tomorrow's class, but depending on the project, it kind of dictates what shape and things we need. So for example, for kindergarten's clouds, I've cut a bunch of like rough slabs for our first graders little bug projects. I have kind of created a little chunk of clay that matches the step. So this is what it looks like when I portion the clay for tomorrow. All right, my friends, we did it. I am gonna head home. I prepped all my clay, I'm ready for tomorrow, and I'm gonna go home, a little workout in, have a little snack, and then be ready to just come back and rock it again tomorrow. Okay, bye.